Hi everyone, this is Cindy with Crane the Heart, and today I'm going to be sharing what I consider my no-fail way to watercolor. So in the summer uh, don donuts paper pad, there's a tropical print, and so that, actually there's two tropical prints, but the non-donut tropical print is the one that I was inspired to use for this project. I thought it would go really, really well um, with the quarterly release um, stamp set. And I think that stamp set is called um, Tropical Leaves. And that's by the Not Too Shabby Shop. I also have the dies for this. And so um, that's kind of what I use. I also use the Just a Note sentiment as well as the Aloha sentiment. And so I wanted to watercolor these leaves. And so here is one of the leaves that I, I did. And I used the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor pencils that are fairly new. Not all the colors. These didn't have all the colors, but there are three sets of them. I believe I used a green from each one of the sets. Um, and I really thought that this would be a great video because maybe like me, like me, you bought these thinking that they would be easy because they're pencils, but they tend to be really fat. So they're really hard, I think, to color with and then to try and watercolor. And what I find then is I get sort of streaks in parts of it that doesn't blend. And so the way that I'm going to show you today is, is really a great way of making sure that um, you don't get that kind of streaked look and you don't get that hot mess of a watercolor kind of look that you might get or that I maybe I'm the only one who gets it but I struggle with watercoloring and so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, get watercolor paper I'm just using I don't even know what I have just just watercolor paper and there's usually a bumpy side and a smooth side you want to use the smooth side I'm actually using the bumpier side but this paper tends to be fairly smooth the one that I'm using might be tonic watercolor paper and so you know because I messed up on the other side and so I'm using the other you know the side that's not messed up so that's the, the bumpier side I'm also using a watercolor brush and you could use water if you'd like um, a paper towel the colors that I am using are um, twisted citron peeled paint and rustic wilderness and so what you're going to do is you're just going to get your watercolor brush and you're going to pull color straight from the crayon or from the pencil. You're just going to go ahead and get your color that way and gives you a very controlled um, thing. And then because you have embossed, I don't know if I mentioned that, you do need to emboss your image um, with, it could be clear, it could be white, it could be black. Um, it could be gold. In this case, I embossed with gold. And that will just keep your image looking very clean. It gives well a well for your color to kind of fall into so it doesn't go everywhere. And um, the watercolor brush will give you a lot of control. As long as you're not squeezing tons and tons of water out of that brush, you should be fine. And then in between the colors, so I just did a whole wash of color using the Twisted Citron. It's got that kind of a yellow kind of look to it. And then you want to kind of squeeze your color out on a paper towel to kind of give you a clean brush. And then you'll go in with your next color. In this case, my next color is my um, middle color, which is peeled paint. And so um, I'm not going to color the entire image with the peeled paint. I'm going to do about three quarters of that color in the peeled paint because I do want some light lighter pieces to kind of come through once everything dries you'll be able to see the lighter um, colors because you kind of want to have different colors come through and you're probably better off letting it dry in between but because I'm doing a video it kind of is what it is um, and then once that's done. You actually, I'm going to go through and do some color. Then you'll do the same thing. You'll clean your brush off and then you'll come through with your darkest color. And it's, it is better if you do let it give it a chance to dry a little bit. It does dry 
I think, fairly quickly. Um, but you should let it dry a little bit, but I'm doing a, a demo. So then you come in with your color and that embossing just helps not mess up. <laughs> really, it really, really helps a lot. Um, and you could do a similar technique with loose colors. You could just use your watercolor brush with, with loose colors, but they tend to be a lot wetter so you might lack a little bit of control. Um, and then when it dries, you also can go through and you can touch up your color. Maybe it didn't get dark enough for you. Maybe it lightened too much. Um, but yeah, you can, you can go back. And then once you kind of see how it looks, it, you know, you can go back in with more color, like I said, and like darken it. And I just really love this technique. I really haven't experimented as much, like I said, with the other watercolors, but I have a lot of watercolor because I want to be better at it. And I like the look of, of it. And I think, you know, I mean, Copics will look great with these also, but I think the watercolor really does a nice job for these leaves. And so I, I'm going through and I'm just kind of touching up my color. I'm using this dark color. And um, you won't really get an idea of exactly how it looks until it dries. It will dry a little bit lighter than what you see. And then here you go. You can see my leaves, watercolor leaves, very kind of subtle because the paper is very bright. Um, so I'm using that tropical paper. And what I did was I just cut a strip of that, I think about two and a half, three inches, maybe three inches. And then I attached some black cardstock just so it peaks on the side. And I also stamped um, using this hot pink ink I have in my stash, the Aloha, so it can kind of match those, those flowers. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and use some glue on the back of that. You can see I didn't color, I, I just used some strip of black because I just needed a little hint of black to show up on um, each side of that panel and so I'm putting down some glue because I cleaned out my craft room and I found all kinds of glue that I have that I just I need to use up so before it goes bad and so I'm using that connect Gina K glue and I put that down and now I've got to figure out what to do with my um, leaves and so I do change my mind a couple of times because I forgot that I actually have a sentiment that I want to put at the bottom there so I, I did change my mind once I figured that out. Um, but I wanted a little bit of the leaf to kind of peek into that white space. And so I'm using glue. I'm not using um, foam tape because I'm going to be foam taping an image. Um, so that's another thing I like to do is I do like to have, you know, some things propped up on foam and some things flat you know, just gives it extra dimension. And so, yeah, I was gonna put that there, which would have looked amazing, but I actually wanna put that just a note there. So I'm actually gonna be moving that up slightly, that larger flower. I don't know if I think that's a Monstera, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna put some glue on there and place my leaf down. And then I've got an image. So I think last, year not too shabby shop came out with a tropical paper pad and matching ephemera which i haven't even used that paper pad and i just found it and it's so cute um but i have the um ephemera which i thought would look great all of the that ephemera would be really really cute with this image so i'm going to go ahead and use that bird it's there on the front. That's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use foam tape on that there. And I'm using up some of these foam squares that I had in my stash. And so that's just going to fit in that spot kind of right there. And it will kind of hide how those two, you know, leaves are, are going together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these little um, foam doohickeys on the back of my ephemera. And I mean, there's all kinds of images that you could use um, for this, but this just absolutely matched perfectly. So I was pretty happy about that. And 
struggling, of course, to get the liner tape off. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my image down in the perfect spot. And then I have my just a note sentiment that can, comes from that Tropical Leaves stamp set from Not Too Shabby Shop. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down there at the bottom. And I've got a super cute card and easy water coloring. I hope that you guys try this technique. Thank you. Thank you for watching.